in the track centre at the London Velodrome, the Lee Valley Velo Park, I should say, right beside this magnificent trophy. And Laura, this venue is the scene of so much history for you, isn't it? What is, what's it like being back? Oh, I just love it. Like, I absolutely do. I remember them quoting me saying um, after the Olympics, I said, I feel like I'm racing in my backyard. <laughs> And to me, it still feels like that. Like every time I come down the stairs and there's the big picture of everyone racing, I'm like, oh, I'm home. Like it, it started here for me, it really did. There are so many pictures of you outside the track here, aren't there? Every time I go past, it's either you or Bradley or Chris Hoy. Yeah. I mean, it's nice. Yeah. I like it. <laughs> what was it like being in here in 2012? Because I was here, obviously, I was down in the media pen and I've got so many memories from here. For you winning Olympic gold in here, yeah, it was such a special, special time in sport, wasn't it? Oh, it was absolutely incredible. I mean, obviously we had the whole build up, but for mm. me, I came in the system and it all happened so fast that I just didn't really think about it. And I remember walking in and our coach at the time saying to us, when you walk in, remember to take your headphones off. And I thought, well, why? Like, why would I do that? And he, he was completely right. It was just to hear the crowd and like, just to feel that atmosphere and to realise that you were at our home games and this probably will never happen in my lifetime again. Um, so it was it was just incredible. And in fact, the podium was around here somewhere because I remember because Paul McCartney was sat up here and when we got on the podium and then he starts singing, how you doing? <laughs> like the whole crowd, and you know, you're like, where am I? Like pinch me, like this, this can't be happening. That is one of my standout memories of the games. Yeah, was he up here then? It was round here it? somewhere, yeah, because it was like, within eye line. Because you know, because everyone started singing and I was like, what? Like, you know when you're a bit confused? <laughs> and then the lights go on and I was like, okay, this makes sense. And then all of a sudden I'm like, yes, Paul McCartney. Like, and that was after your team pursuit gold, It was a team pursuit, it? yeah. And obviously that being the first medal, everyone always says, oh, which one's your favourite medal? And to be honest, it probably has changed more towards the Tokyo Madison now because of circumstance, you know, yeah. because of Albi. But that day in that team pursuit, my dreams came true. Like as cliche as it sounds, I all I ever wanted when I was growing up and when everyone said, what do you want to be? And I said, I want to go to the Olympics. I want to be a cyclist. And all I ever said was, and I want to be an Olympic champion. And for like that to happen at home, I just couldn't have asked for anything more. And to be serenaded by Sir Paul McCartney as it's happening, that's just, surreal. It was, and like so many things about it, like is why the memories just, like I'm so fond of. The fact that we had royals, you know, Prince Harry was in the crowd. Boris Johnson was in the crowd. I mean, there's a, there's a video of Boris trying to work out the Omnium sports. <laughs> <laughs> because obviously it does get a bit confusing, doesn't it? To, like for me, I look up and I know what I've got to get. But for your yeah, everyday person, like Boris, for example, who probably hasn't watched it, he sat there trying to like work out. And I just think that's that's quality. Like that's that's my bike race that he's trying to work out. <laughs> and were you aware of all of those big names in the crowd when you were racing? Because you mentioned a few of them, and I think maybe Prince William was here and Kate and. Um, Stella McCartney was here as well. And every time I came in here, I was like star spotting, trying to see everyone. Were you aware yeah. of that or able to sort of shut it out? No, not at all. Like the only people, so when I walked in, I always made sure I could spot my mum and dad in the crowd. And then Emma came for the Omnium. And that Emma, was all sister. I really, my sister, yeah. And that was all I really cared about. Um, and I mean, in the Omnium as well, Joe and Danny were there in the crowd. And I just wanted familiar faces. Um, just so then it felt normal. It didn't feel like this big occasion. You say that that was the moment your dream came true whenever you won Team Pursuit Goals. Yeah. So many of us have these childhood dreams and never know what it's like to realise them. Yeah. Was it what you wanted it to be? In that moment, standing here on the podium, Sir Paul McCartney singing Hey Jude, the whole place going absolutely yeah. insane. Was that how you wanted it to feel? It was like way better than anything I could have imagined. Like. Like you say, you don't know what you're going to feel like. You cross that finish line and you have no idea what you're going to feel like. I was with two of my closest friends at the time. Like I couldn't have been on that podium with two nicer people, obviously Joanna and Danny. And then just the crowd to be at home, to have so many famous faces and for my family to be there. I, I literally, I couldn't have wished for a better kind of like one special moment. And what about the Omnium as well then? Because we were just chatting and I was saying to you, I think your elimination in that Omnium is still the most I was going to say the most thrilling elimination race I've ever watched, but one of the most thrilling races I've ever, uh -huh. I've ever watched because you were just like Houdini and I couldn't work out how you'd be at the back and find little gaps and just make your way through. It was yeah. it, astounding. I think because I was only 20, I just didn't really care. <laughs> it was one of those things I oh, thought, I love that. if I crash, I'm going to bounce, be fun. <laughs> And like you just honestly, you stop thinking about it. I think in that one moment, all I thought about was you've got to win this bike race because obviously 
before that, at the time, it was the points race before the elimination race. Well, let's face it, I wasn't very good at bunch races. So that just took me way down the standing. And I was like, right, you need to win this bike race. You're good at this one. That I didn't even think about, well, this is the Olympics. If you crash, like you're going home. <laughs> I just sort of thought, just do the job in hand. And we obviously raced the um, track uh, World Cup mm -hmm. before. So that was like the test event, the first time we'd experienced this velodrome. And I worked out that actually I can ride this thing from the back because everyone kept saying to me, I kept saying, right, I'm small, so I'm aerodynamic, so I'm going to get the benefit of sitting behind someone. And we know that I've got a repeated sprint. I don't understand why I'm not riding it from the back. Everyone's like, no, nope, no, nope, it's dangerous. Stay near the front. <laughs> well, that's fine, except now I'm rubbish. <laughs> and so I just thought, no, I'm drawing a line across that. I'm doing it my way and we're going to see what happens. And obviously it went well at the test event. <laughs> and I thought, you know what? I know this is the Olympics and I've only practiced this once, but let's give it another go. <laughs> well, it worked out and it was it such did. a thrill. Do you remember as well everybody's obsession over your plats and yeah, these games? Yeah, yeah, French that. plats, yeah. yeah. I mean, that was total, I had no choice as well. So I did that because my hair wouldn't fit. I mean, my hair's thick. It would not fit underneath that Olympic helmet. And everyone kept telling me, these helmets are the best helmet you're ever going to get. <laughs> and I'm like, right, we'll do what we can. <laughs> and so I thought, right, it has to be plat. It was either French plats or um, like a swim cap or like a... <laughs> Can you imagine? You know, you I would win, have loved to have <laughs> Win the bike race, I'll whip it off, and now she's a swimmer. No. I mean, that would be a natural transition into triathlon, well, yeah, at least. True, I yeah. Suppose, yeah. But yeah, I think the plans work better. But the London Olympics weren't the only competition that you had here. You have lots of other memories from here as well. 2016, the World Championships. Yeah, so obviously that was the last time that I won the Omnium um, at World Championships. And honestly, I think a home crowd has such an advantage. Mm -hmm. I think every time I step in this velodrome, I get such a special feeling. And the crowd here always get behind me. And it just gives me this sense of being home. And so the 2016 for British cycling wasn't exactly going very well. And then I just randomly said to my coach, look, I want to do the scratch race. So the scratch race um, fell on the same day as the qualifying for the team pursuit. I was just so confident in myself. I just thought, the team pursuit went badly. We split the line. Um, and I just thought, no, I'm going better than this. Like I need to prove to myself for the Omnium, for the Olympics, that I am better than this. And I just thought it's at London, like they're going to get behind me. And that was obviously the first race that just went brilliantly. And then it just gave me so much confidence for that Omnium. And I just never really thought I couldn't do it. Like sometimes you just get these days, like the Madison at Tokyo, I woke up and I was like on top of the world. I thought this is our day. Yeah, like it's just a really, you don't get it often, but when you get it, I was so confident in winning that bike race. Amazing. What about being back here now then for the Track Champions League and you're on the other side of things, you're commentating and you're co-presenting with me. How's that going to feel? Are you excited about that? I'm really excited. Yeah. I think it's just the track. Yeah. Like, you know, places have smells. Like you go to your granny's house and it's got a smell <laughs> and, and you're like, Oh, that, that's what my granny used to smell like. It's the same here. Like every time. This doesn't smell like your granny's though, does no, it? No, it doesn't. No, no. <laughs> Although it's not necessarily a bad thing. Granny yeah, yeah, smells yeah. kind of nice. Yeah, that's always comforting, really, isn't it? Yeah. But, you might have had a very high performing granny. You know, <laughs> just smelled like sweat. <laughs> <laughs> Too far. But no, I, I do. I honestly think each place has a smell. Newport, when we go there, holding camp, it's a holding camp smell. Here, mm -hmm. it is just bike racing, and I love it. Like, and I don't think it doesn't matter that I'm not on the track. Even in here, I'm getting that that buzz. Like, I'm getting that sense of happiness. Do you know what I love about this venue as well is that it was built for the London Games and as you say you had the test event before 2012 yeah. but it almost represents this whole evolution of track cycling in particular in this country and the support and the audience that has grown with it and to be able to sell out this venue for two nights now for the Track Champions League it almost feels like it's all coming full circle. You're coming full circle. The venue's coming full circle. It's a lovely yeah. story, isn't it? Oh, definitely, yeah. And like you say, I think it just shows this massive pathway of what where track cycling's come from. I mean, when I first started, obviously Sir Brad was my idol. Like, he's always been there. He's always been around. Same with Sir Chris. He's always been around. But that really was it. Like, I didn't really know any other names. And then 10, whatever years later, obviously it's more than that from Brad, but my career, 10 years later, and it is huge. Like you say, we're now selling out crowds. And that's the best thing I think about this track is everyone always comes here. Like, so it's always a sellout crowd. And everybody has been so looking forward to this as well. I've got goosebumps just thinking about uh. it. I can't wait for tonight, <laughs> bring it on.